this is my Saturday look. Uh, I decided now is the best time to do this before I get about my day because I've got a busy rest of the day and I'm going to be too late to do it tomorrow. So this is Dylan. This is the Comic Call, brand new, uh, not a brand new episode of the Comic Call, a show that I do every week where I talk about what new comics came out this week. Um, good amount this week, but the funny thing was, you know, usually this week is when one of my busiest ones, I mean, most expensive ones, and with the exception of one of the trades I bought this week, it really wasn't that bad, so maybe things are changing on it, but we got some good stuff, and we're going to get right into it, because it is Saturday, I got other things I got to do, and I just want to get this uh, out there, because there's some good stuff, so go to your little comic book store, check out, maybe get some of the stuff that's right here in this pile right here, or find something you don't know. That didn't get shown up in this show because I don't buy every comic. There's a ton of ton of comics. Marvel's Legacy is in full bloom, and one of the things I'm hating about their Legacy is that they have these. What's the the proper term? The uh, the weird covers, the lenticular, excuse me, lenticular covers of like. Hulk Wolverine, well, the Hulk 181, which is the first appearance of Wolverine, and then it's a lenticular cover for what X Men number two or something like that. It's it's stupid. Anyway, that's the size point. I don't have any of those because I don't want to get that. But there's some good stuff in here. A lot of DC, very few Marvel, and a lot of independent. So and one trade. So let's get started. This is all stuff that came out this week, and is going to be available at your store, and is highly recommended by me. Uh, as I said, there might be other stuff for you to get. So. First up is Ragman number one. I love the character of Ragman, one of the best characters ever. He's in, excuse me, my back has been aching lately. Uh, he's been one of the characters that showed up, I think, in Arrow last season. So now they decided to come out with this. He's one of the most interesting characters out there. The basic thing you know about Ragman is he has these mystical rags that he wears as his costume. And whenever he kills or defeats a bad guy, their soul gets sucked into the rag. Now, it's a kind of a horror-style thing, so it's a perfect timing for um, Halloween, and Ray Fox is the writer. He hasn't done anything for a little bit. He used to do, do some stuff with the text like that, and, and Iki Miranda is the artist. So, it's a, a new take on Ragman. It looks pretty pretty cool, and it's one of those books that when I heard it was announced, I was really looking forward to it, and um, it's going to be a, a new... Oh, here's his first, first appearance of him. It's his um, a really interesting character, and um, hopefully, you know, done right. I've always had a soft spot in my heart for the supernatural characters, and Ragman totally fits the bill right there. Um, so, definitely, probably my book of the week, probably one of them, because there's a few of them. This one I, I bought on a whim. And I don't know if it is um, – sorry, my back again. Uh, I don't know if it's similar to Bombshells where it's digital first and then they release it. I think this is just its own comics. I don't think it is digital first. But I figured, you know, why not just check it out. It's something brand new. It's similar to Bombshells. It's called Gotham City Garage Number 1. Now – up here, we'll tell you what it is. It is a new series based on the DC collectible statues. Now, that's where something happened with Bombshells, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. Bombshells was the uh, World War II era when they did – DC wanted to do a theme variant month cover with uh, bombshell characters, like their, their female characters dressed in the old-style 1940s propaganda poster, stuff like that. And – they became so popular that Marguerite Bennett decided she wanted to write a book about them. So, but instead of it being a regular comic book, she did it digitally. And so it's been one of the more successful series. So I guess they're trying for lightning in a bottle again because those characters are based on covers. This apparently there's a DC comics collectible of the superheroines wearing in, in motorcycle gear. It's written by Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing with art by Brian Ching. So basically it's like a post-apocalyptic world and um, you've got you've got the male heroes, but they're slightly different. That's you know like an evil Batman type of thing. And then you have you know, Supergirl discovering her powers for the first time being one of these characters. And then you get the rest of the motorcycle ones. Of course there's a Harley Quinn one, there's a big bard, um, there's a silver banshee, which is interesting, which is different and unique, and there's a Catwoman one. So it's about, you know, 
kicking ass females in a post apocalyptic world who drive motorcycles. So if you like that kind of stuff, there you go, go for it. Um, and uh, we'll see where this goes. Um, I don't know. I call, I bought this on a whim. I look. I leaf through it. Brian Ching's artwork looks interesting. And getting on the ground floor. Speaking of bombshells, Bombshells United number three, which is um, they had the original Bombshell shell series, and they ended that, and then they did this new series when they changed stuff over, and they are you know doing the same thing. It's a uh, digital first, and then they're releasing a comic book form. Marguerite Bennett, uh, there's two parts in this. Marguerite Bennett and uh, Sia Oyum is the artist for the first one. And I think it's um, World War II in America and how that's affecting people in America. So you have the bombshells in America um, because all the bombshell stories have been um, different areas of the war. And the second part, uh, Marguerite writes with art by Luciano Vecchio. Vecchio. So you have two distinct styles, but it's the same storyline uh, continued through there. So uh, Bombshells will make one more appearance a little bit later as well. Uh, next up we have uh, DC's, it was supposed to be their summer because I, I saw an ad for it last year for a summer thing, but I guess they push it to the fall because this doesn't end until Valentine's Day of next year, but it's metal. Uh, issue number three, um, continuing the Batman Dark Knight crossover thing that Scott Snyder is doing with Greg Capullo. Um, alternate realities, the multiverse type of things where a bunch of evil Batman are taking over the DC Universe proper and the superheroes are trying to stop them. Uh, gorgeous artwork is always from Capullo, but as usual, I'm I'm not a big fan of Snyder's work, and the book is interesting, but it's also one of the, the weirdest books you're ever going to read, and I, I guess maybe that's okay and unique, but still, it just makes me go, hmm, we'll see, but uh, we'll check it out. But I mean, the artwork is very, very, pre very pretty, very pretty. Uh, next up, we have Mr. Miracle number three. Uh, this is a great series. It continues to boggle the mind. Tom King is probably one of the, the best writers of the year, if you want to go absolutely bonkers with it, with his vision. His Batman storyline has been phenomenal, and now Mr. Miracle. And Mitch Gerards is doing the artwork. And again, it's a very stylized, weird story arc that you're just going to need to... It'll probably all make sense eventually in the end. I, I think, you know, I have a general idea of where I think it's going to go. Uh, but then there are some changes that have been popping up uh, periodically. Like, check this out. This is a gorgeous sequence. I mean, it looks like, you know, Tom likes working with his nine panel pages because that's like all this book is, is nine panel pages. So uh, it's been a good series so far. It's, but it's one of these that you're just going to have to sit down and you think about it and don't try to figure it all out. It's a 12-issue series, so it should all make sense by the end. Um, we'll find out. Action Comics, number 989, is out this week as well, continuing the Ozymandias effect, or the Oz effect, which is um, this is um, continuing into the DC Rebirth storyline itself with the crossover with the Watchmen, where we discover that Superman's father, Jor-El, is still alive, which to me is still a terrible uh, story contrivance, but We'll see. Um, it's written by um, Dan Jurgens with art by Victor Bogdanovich and inks by Bogdanovich and Trevor Scott. So, I mean, it's it's an important series, an important um, arc, which details the continuing DC Rebirth uh, saga, and you probably need to check it out. And you get Lois being Lois again as she takes on a uh, a. Uh, gun-wielding psycho of the Daily Planet, but then she also gets to meet her father-in-law, who she hasn't met before, so uh, should be interesting nonetheless. Continuing also the DC Rebirth thing as well, because there is a overreaching story arc with DC Rebirth that some of the comics are going to be dealing with, particularly Action and Detective is dealing with that also right now. Uh, it's issue number 966. Now, y'all know I have a problem when Batman is shown wielding guns. But there's a reason for this one, because this isn't Bruce Wayne. This is Tim Drake, and it's in a future, a alternate dimension future, where um, Tim Drake of our, of the DC proper dimension has gone and has been um, you know, sent to this alternate reality where he's Batman. Um, James Tinian IV is a writer, Eddie Burroughs, Pencils, Eber Ferreira, Inks. So, it's a big storyline. You want to you know, keep track on with the with the uh, overreaching 
uh, Rebirth story arc as well. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of these are going to you know, come into play eventually. And for those who've wanted to see what a Tim Drake Batman would be like, this is it. I've unfortunately believe that they have totally dropped the ball on Tim Drake since they started the new 52. So hopefully maybe this will bring him back into some prominence. Um, it's been an interesting run for Tim Drake. Let's say that. Now, I complained a little bit a while back about the two-part story arc uh, that Keith Champagne wrote about Superman getting um, a, a yellow ring and, and handling all that because it's not Peter Tomasi and Patrick Leeson who are killing it on the book. They've been taking an extended break. But, you know, you think that was just maybe just a typical storyline someone to go over? Actually, no. It's going to continue into how Jordan the Green Lantern Corps number 30. So the story that started in um, Superman number – I forget what it is, 20, 30 something or other, um, is now you know, continuing in How Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. Uh, it's written by Robert Vendetti with art by Patrick Zercher. So this one focuses more on Hal Jordan with the Corps making my, a minor appearance, but Hal gets to see Superman he hadn't seen for a while. And Superman basically in this sequence, uh, here we go. In this page right here, he basically does exactly – tells the exact story of that two-part storyline in about two panels. So it's really fun. Now, the good news is since I figured out – I just discussed it. I, I was complaining that Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason were not going to be – you know, haven't been on the book for a while, and so I might be dropping it. Well, no, I'm wrong. As I, I, I was – I thought they'd be working a big thing. Here's the next big storyline, Superman taking over Apocalypse, Imperius Lex, as is they're coming back with issue uh, number, what well, doesn't say, but it's going to be a four-part story beginning October, so probably next week will probably be that storyline. So, uh, But meanwhile, we have this Green Lantern core story that is connected to the Superman stuff. So pretty nice. Our Patrick Zercher is one of those guys who is pretty steady, and um, I guess, you know, you got to connect the story somehow. I just love this cover, um, and hopefully it's going to be going somewhere. But this is the Flash number thirty-two. Uh, I just really like the cover. Um, it's creepy and interesting, and keeping up with what's going on. I thought that William Joshua Williamson was going to be off of the Flash, but I guess he's still got some more stories to tell because he's the writer of this issue, along with Christian Deuce as the artist. So. Um, and it looks like I was reading the back also. It looks like there's going to be a crossover with metal coming up really soon. So then they'll get back to their main storyline. So we'll probably be seeing that uh, soon as well. So Barry Allen is trapped in uh, Iron Heights. So there's that one. All right. <clears throat> Next up we have Red Hood and the Outlaws, number 15. I just like the, the joke blurb on it with um, Jason saying, don't you people have detectiving to do because it's the crew from Detective Comics, uh, Batgirl, Clayface, um, Batwing, and all those characters. But as always, uh, Scott Lobdell is doing a great job with the story, and Dexter Soy is doing fantastic with artwork, and uh, I, I really think there's only been one or a few issues where they have had a separate artist on it, so Dexter Soy is doing a really good job of keeping up with it, and his artwork is really nice, and I like the characters and the storyline, which to me is surprising as well because Scott Lobdell has always been hit or miss for me, and this has actually been a huge hit for me. And you know, just look at this awesome you know, action sequences by Dexter Soy, just fantastic artwork, and then them squaring off against the Detective Comics team. So I think that's really great. So Red Hood and the Outlaws is a really good series. Number 15 is out this week. Uh, Supergirl number 14, um, gorgeous variant cover for those who like the TV series. The third season just started up again, so you might want to keep uh, keep an eye on this. Um, Drew by Steve Orlando with uh, pencils by Jose Luis and inks by Norm Ratmud. Um, and here Supergirl crosses over with the new Superman from China, uh, and that's the main story. I think they're starting a brand new story arc after this, and it might be a good hopping on point for you um, to check it out. But uh, – who is that, Adam Strange? No, it isn't. But again, what they're trying to do is um, they are trying to connect it to the TV series, but at the same time making it different enough that you're not – 
reading adaptations of the um, TV series. So um, it looks like, yeah, I mean, as I said, it looks like that they're going to be starting a whole brand new story arc, and hopefully Steve Orlando is still going to be on the book. I haven't heard of him leaving, so we'll see. And also on the super scale, we have Superwoman number 15. Again, I keep threatening to cancel this, but there's just something about the characters. Um, Kevin Perkins is the writer. Uh, Sammy Bassar Bassari is the artist. And um, you get um, – this is a – this is the new 52 Lana Lang who has the Superman powers. And Lois Lane of the new 52 had him as well, but she died in the first issue of Superwoman. And so this is the Lois Lane of the – old DC universe and they become friends now. And so it gives her a chance to you know, do stuff. And there's Lana, uh, uh, Lena Luther, who is, uh, causing problems in, um, the Supergirl TV show, but also is now causing problems in this series as well. And you get steel in there as well. Who's dating Lana Lang's character. So you get them all together. So it's still an interesting book and I, I'm, I'm going to probably keep giving it a chance because it's, it's a good series. It's good, good characters and um, our work's not too bad. And, you know, Kevin Perkins is doing pretty good. I love this cover also. There's some really good covers this week. Uh, it's Wonder Woman number 32. Um, it's uh, the treasures of Hercules. So everything that Hercules did in his uh, trials, uh, she's looking at right now. It's written by James Robinson, pencils by Sergio Davila, inks by Scott Hanna, and Martin Morales. So it's Wonder Woman. Um, my wife Dawn uh, watched Wonder Woman for the first time last night, and she enjoyed it immensely. Um, so if you've been a fan of the um, the movie, it's not quite the same as the movie, but it's still a Wonder Woman comic, and I would highly recommend it. Greg Rucka's story arc was fantastic before this. Now they've done a couple fill-ins, and we'll see what happens after the story arc is over. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully it'll be something good. But it's a beautiful cover, though. Uh, Just League America number 16. Um, this one is kind of, again, sort of taking the Legends of Tomorrow TV series and mixing it up a little bit, but different characters. This one has the Atom and uh, Killer Frost and Lobo and Batman and Black Canary. Um, and uh, I forget who else is in it. Uh, the Ray. <clears throat> it's uh, written by Steve Orlando with art by Felipe Watanabe and Rui Jose is the inker, and this one focuses on the Atom. Uh, you have two Atoms now, and then you have the new bad guy makes his appearance right here, and um, it's a different take on the Justice League. It's not your typical, you know, the Justice League and the uh, regular DC universe is all the heavy hitters. These are sort of the minor ones with the exception of Batman. Uh, that's it for the DC Comics proper. As always, I keep getting this, Scooby Apocalypse number 18, because the creative team, Keith Giffen and James DeMattis, can do no wrong. And it's an interesting concept, the Hanna-Barbera DC books, which they've updated for the present day. This is a zombie, not really a zombie apocalypse, but the apocalypse in general with demons and zombies. And instead of them taking on people who are dressed up as ghosts, they're actually taking on demons and stuff like that. But it's got the Giffen DeMattis um, humor, and it's got great artwork from old faithful guys from the 80s and 90s ron wagner is the artist on this one with art by andy owens now they're also starting more backup issues with uh, this because dc has been doing pretty good with their hanna barbera updates but they can't do a series for every one of their updates so they're going to do some backup stories so they are doing a backup story on this one which features where is it uh, Secret Squirrel. It's written by G Keith Giffen and James DeMatteis with art by Ben Caldwell, who did, um, I think, who does the artwork for the Amazing Squirrel Girl and in, in Marvel. But uh, so this is going to be the first part of a uh, Secret Squirrel storyline. So you'll, it's it's a small, you know, four or five pages here and there. So it's interesting. But what drew my attention looking through this book the other day is continuing. You know, we have the Dastardly and Muttley book, which I've been showing you the last couple months. Uh, so the next wave of uh, Hanna-Barbera DC books coming out. We also got the Snaggle uh, Puss one coming up a little bit later in the year, which is going to be phenomenal from the writer of the Flintstones. We've got the Jetsons coming up, and this is the first ad for it, and it looks spectacular. It's written by Jimmy Pomiati, so you can't go wrong with that. 
art by Pierre Brito. So that's going to be a good one. So you'll be seeing that in a future episode of the Comic Call. But for until now, Scooby Apocalypse is still one of those books that is really one of the only ongoing ones still that's going that's going on right now. So probably it was like the first one that came out and it's still the last one standing for the most part. Flintstones is always going to be a 12-issue series and so on and so forth. That's it for DC. As I said, a very, 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 very short Marvel week for me. Um, for those who know me or those who don't know me, Spider-Man has always been the guy that got me into comics. My dad got me started collecting comics when he gave me his Spider-Man collection, but all it was was Spider-Man books. So I would go out and I'd buy the more recent comics, Spider-Man comics, and they'd be like Peter Parker and Web of Spider-Man and all that. And then I started branching off into like Marvel team up where he team up with other superheroes. And then that in turn would lead me to go check out an Avengers or Captain America. So like that, and that's how my comic habit got started. But the two Marvel comics that I got this week are both Spider-Man related. Uh, this one is the first issue of the Spider-Man legacy where they're going to start renumbering the stuff again. So Renumbering is one of these real, real bizarre things. So you have the original run of the 1960s book, when it started 1960s, going till about, I don't know, I guess the late 90s. And then they decided to restart it over again. And then they did a new number one, and then they restarted and did another like 100-some issues. And then they stopped, and then they restarted it again. So basically what they're doing is they're taking all these starts and stops and saying, okay, well, the last – comic we did to the 1960s original numbering was say 510 uh so now you know we see we did like 100 episodes here so that makes it 610 and we did like uh 180 issues of this one so that makes it 789 so this is issue 789 of me spider-man so if you renumbered the second and third series is when they did the restart and add it to the 1960s numbering this would be the issue you'd get for this week which would be 789 do you understand? That's Marvel Legacy's things. They're renumbering things. Now, they were the ones that started the whole thing. It's like, you know, why don't we just restart with number one? Uh, and and they did it over and over again. That got to be really annoying. So, uh, what are you going to do? Anyway, but this is the newest issue. Supposedly, it's a jumping on point because this is the first Legacy issue. So, what Legacy was trying to do, much like what Rebirth was trying to do, is to get new viewers and new readers to come in and re re, re we get into the book. So they do a quick synopsis of what's going on. It's written by Dan Slott, uh, art by Stuart Emmerman and Wade Von Groh Badger. And apparently now Peter, who was at the height of all of his powers, is now back to being Peter Parker layabout. Um, and he is interested in Mockingbird. And um, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, but yeah, so they're really pushing the legacy stuff. It looks like Liz Allen and Harry Osborn are getting back together also, which is a really good story uh, line as well. Um, you're starting to get a lot more characters. Robbie Robertson, um, you know, uh, Betty Brant's coming back, um, and Peter Parker is like enemy, public enemy number one, so there's all kinds of stuff happening with that. And uh, you also know, get appearance by you know, Mary Jane and Aunt May and stuff like that. So... Um, and Flash Thompson's back, stuff like that. And then, of course, you know, he's interested in Black Canary, and there's some sexual tension between them, so you got to like that. But what really drew my attention was leafing through this and all these ads they're doing for, um, you know, all their legacy stuff. There's going to be some interesting books I didn't know they were coming back out with. Like Moon Knight, they're going to be doing another Moon Knight series, which is interesting. Power Pack, one of my favorite series, apparently is going to be coming back also. Uh, Silver Sable, Dark Hawk, Master of Kung Fu, Not Brand Eck, they're going to be getting all of their own series back. And that's leading me to think, you know what, maybe I need to give Marvel a little bit more of a chance. Because those were all series that I really, really loved. So we'll see what happens. But of course, as I said, all these, you know, legacies, like... The, uh, I'm sorry, Doctor Strange, number 381, and the She-Hulk, number 159, you know, uh, the rebranding She-Hulk, so that might be something to be, to look into also, um, so I, you know, it all depends, and then of course, yeah, this is great, hopefully, they'll continue that, so 
but knowing him is the Peter Parker luck. We get a little bit of a background for those who don't know about Spider-Man, a little like three-page legacy thing. So there's some interesting, much more interesting books than I thought there would be when it came to legacy, and I might have to rethink my just assigned to cut Marvel out of my life, particularly with that Power Pack book and Darkhawk, who I really, really like. So, to be continued. Also, we also have Amazing Spider-Man, Renew Your Vows, number 12, which is another great series. It's a alternate universe where Spider-Man, where Peter Parker and Mary Jane are married, and they have a daughter, and they all have powers. Uh, I like the fact that Mary Jane is now the one who has the Venom uh, symbiote as her power, and there's Peter, and then there's their daughter right there. Um, Ryan Stegman's writer, Brian Level, is... Uh, is the art, which is fine, but I would kind of like to see Ryan Stegman back on art again because I like Ryan Stegman's artwork, but you know what? If he keeps writing what he's writing, you know, go for it. I mean, here they made Norman Osborn a child, which is fantastic, a little spoiled child. Um, so, and Not Brandeck was one of those series that was like a comedic type of thing, so it might be fun to take a look at that. So this is uh, Renew Your Vows, and still a good series, so. So keep an eye out. They're Marvel's legacy books are going to start rolling with the punches, going crazy soon, so keep an eye out for this. That's it for Marvel, believe it or not. All I got left is my independence and my trade, and then we're out of here. Now, this one surprised me when I leafed through it. Um, I love this book, and I've told you the story before. Um, this is Time and Vine number four. Tom Zoller, uh, when I worked at Diamond as a brand manager, he was one of the first guys that I got into Diamond with his um, – his uh, first project and now he's successful in IDW and so when this book came out it's a great premise where you drink a, a, a bottle of wine from like a, a winery from like 1957 you can travel back in time to 1957 and experience stuff in that so it's a great storyline nice clean cartoony ish type of artwork um and uh the problem was, I was like, okay, this is such a great series. I'd like to see it go on forever, but I'm leafing through it, and this looks like it's the last issue because they're wrapping up a bunch of stuff. It looks like, you know, things are going, you know, are reaching ahead and stuff like that. So I'm kind of depressed that this might be the end of this because this book has been fantastic, but hopefully, you know, maybe he'll, uh, he'll keep doing it. So we'll see. Uh, but for now, it looks like this is the, the last issue of that, so hopefully it won't be. But definitely pick up Time and Vine. What's great about also at the price tag is four ninety nine, but it's double. There's like no ads in it, and it's like double-sized. So every issue has been double-sized. So well worth it. Been a fantastic storyline, and I highly, and that's another you know pick of the week as well. I got this one on a, a whim because it's Halloween, and I like Art Balthazar. Um, I think it's Art Balthazar. No, actually, it's it's similar. He he did the cover. Art Balthazar did the cover for Wrapped Up, which is, looks like a mummy kid who eats pizza on skateboards. Um, it's written by Dave Scheidt Sh with art by Scoot McMahon, but it looks very Art Balthazar-esque. But you know what? That's okay. It's an all-ages book. It's Halloween. It's about a mummy who loves pizza. There's wizards, um, all kinds of crazy stuff. And it's it looks cute, so I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out and see if it's uh, something I might be interested in. But yeah, this is um I thought Art Balthazar was doing the the series, but that's okay. Sheena number two, um, just you know, guess why I like this one, you know. But uh, it's also written by Marguerite Bennett and Christina Trujillo with art by Moore Tot and Dini Macarace. And it's just basically a jungle girl, you know. And her adventures in the jungle. Sheena's been around for a while, and Dynamite's been doing pretty good with their female-centric books like Red Sonia and Vampirella. They've got Barbarella coming up soon, which I might have to check out as well. They also do like a good Betty Page book as well, so we'll see what happens. But this one is is interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm also I like that cover a lot too. Uh, Mech Cadet U number three, uh, written by Greg Pack with art by Takeshi Miyazaki. Miyazawa, sorry, Takashi. Um, basically, you know, a like a Japanese sort of influence book. Uh, Greg Pak, I think, is Korean, and Takeshi Miyazaki is um, Japanese. So you get 
a very Asian flair from this, and they're both very well respected in the fields and the fact that this is their own creative own series, and it's gorgeous looking, and it's something that they love. Why not do it? And it's from Boom Studios, where my friend Philip Sablik is, one of the big wigs there. So, look at me name dropping here and there. Um, Back to the Future, number 23. Um, continuing the saga, Back to the Future, what's great about this is... Um, it's co-written by Bob Gale, who is actually the creator and writer of the Back to the Future trilogy and the movies. So he's continuing the story of Back to the Future along with John Barber. And art is by Marcelo Ferrer, with inks by Maria Keane and J.L. Straw. Um, it started off as a fact series where it would be frequently asked questions like, how did Marty meet Doc for the first time? And what happened with this? What happened with that? But then they start going off into a tangent where they've been doing more time traveling stories, which makes sense. Now, it's also been revealed that coming up probably next year, uh, or at least in December, I think, uh, Bob Gale is going to e either they're going to either this series is going to be canceled and they're going to restart another one, or it's going to be interspersed with it, or it's going to be its own mini series. Everyone wondered what happened, you know, at the end of Back to the Future 3, when, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, where Doc comes back in time with his wife and their kids in the big time traveling train. What are the adventures they had in between the time when Marty left the old West to when he reappeared with the time traveling train, Bob Gale is writing stories that are going to take place that are going to fill in the gaps of that period. And that's coming out um, either December or next year. So that's something to look forward to. <clears throat> I'm a fan of Dr. Who, but not a huge one, but this is uh, a story arc that's been going uh, and is going to keep going for a few more issues that has all the doctors involved with it. This is the Lost Dimension, uh, episode five. This one is um, the fifth doctor, um, you know, the fifth doctor one shot. Um, but they have two stories. One is about River Song, who fans of the uh, Matthew Smith um, doctor know who she is. And then you also get the fifth doctor done by a different creative team and all the storylines are interconnected to this lost dimension storyline there have been stories with the ninth and 10th 11th and 12th doctors and the second and the third stuff like that And there's gonna be a few more coming down the line um we've got the 12th doctor coming up we've got the lost dimension special which has a bunch of the doctors and companions working together and then the grand finale with all four of the modern day bot doctors working together to stop them so there's that I've been following that storyline, so we'll see what happens with that. That's it for comics. And finally, one last thing. Um, this trade came out this week, uh, and you can only get it now at comic book stores. You have to wait till next week to get it from Amazon. So I find that kind of cool. I talked about Bombshells earlier um, this uh, episode. Uh, Bombshells is a great series, and I was not on the boat when it first came out, but I've been – buying every one of the trades and I've been reading them and enjoying them. Well, it looks like the last of the uh, original series bombshell uh, collection is out today. This is volume five called the death of illusion. Again, Marguerite Bennett, um, Mirka Andolfo, Laura Braga, Elsa Chartier, Carmen Carnero, Richard Ortiz, Rachel Stott, and Eke are all the artists. It's all different styles of art, and it's one big overreaching story arc using all these different female characters during World War II, different um, you know, characterizations, different costumes, different stuff like that. Um, so some pretty – ooh, you get your first appearance of Power Girl of the uh, new, new series. You know, so they're bringing in a lot of the uh, superheroines. And you also get the the bit about um, the, uh, the the annual, which I bought a while back. So um, good stuff. So this might finish up your collection of bombshells. So if you haven't read bombshells, I highly recommend you buy all five trades if you can, uh, or at least the first couple. But know full well that the fifth one is out now, and then I guess that's going to lead into the uh, DC bombshell, DC Comics bombshells, United Comic, which I've already shown you, and I'm already caught up on those. So we should be set once I read that. I should be completely set on the bombshells. So that's it. Thank you for this early morning Saturday event uh, for you guys. Now, go out, go to your local comic book store. If you saw something you liked in there, 
go get it. There are a bunch of number ones. The so Marvel Legacy thing's going on, so you can get uh, hooked onto new comics there and, and good jumping on points and just go and see what's going on. And I'm going to keep bringing this up, and I love this. My, my store is moving to a bigger store, and I'm excited for it November 1st, so a couple more weeks before um, – we get to see the big giant 5,000 square feet store than this little itty bitty one. I cannot wait to see it. And it's also at the top of my street. Come out my development, you go up the street, boom, there it is right there. So my complex store is going to be so much closer. Uh, I'll be discussing this and more on tomorrow's episode of Dylan Knows, the other show I do on YouTube. Uh, I'll be having uh, acclaimed author MJ Khan, who I've had on the show since I started four years ago. He's done 20, 30 episodes with me. Um, He'll be coming on. We'll be hanging out. We'll be talking comic books. We'll be doing our um, discussion on the Justice League trailer, the New Mutants trailer, the Wonder, Wonder Woman review because he saw it when it first came out. I hadn't seen it till recently, so I haven't had a chance to talk about it, so we'll probably review that. Any other comic book news is coming out, maybe some Halloween-related stuff, and we'll definitely be talking about the move of my comic book store. So that's at 12.30 p.m. tomorrow. If you like this comic call, come back here tomorrow, 12.30 p.m., on Sunday and uh, check out uh, Dylan Knows We Talk More Comics with acclaimed author uh, MJ Khan. For now, uh, it is almost 10.30 a.m. I got to get moving. I got a lot of stuff I got to do. My back is still bugging me, but <clears throat> it's getting better and um, I won't overdo it. That'll be my excuse. Ah, I can't do it, babe. My, my back hurt, remember? Anyway, I got stuff I got to do. So uh, time to get cleaned up and I'm glad you got to see me in all my glory. All right, y'all, uh, have fun. I'll see you next week uh, and uh, on the comic call tomorrow for Dylan Knows. Thanks. <laughs>